This is the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast, episode number 59. All links and resources you hear in this episode can be found by going to yourkickasslife.com forward slash 59. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host, the girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, ass kickers. Welcome to another solo edition of the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast. Thank you so much for those of you that gave me feedback and told me that you liked hearing me all by myself get up on my soapbox and rant for a little while. My last episode actually turned out to be longer than I had anticipated, so what can I say? I guess I like to be a little bit verbose. I'm going to try to cut them down a little bit. Uh, I know that y'all are busy, but I wanted to tell you this quick story that is kind of funny, and a Lord help me with parenting. So for those of you that don't know, I have two little rascals my son is seven and my daughter is five. They are turning, they're having birthdays this summer, so they'll be eight and six very soon. My son's birthday, uh, I'm recording this on Monday the 10th, so his birthday's tomorrow, the 11th, and uh, he's very excited to be eight. And my daughter is, well, let's just say I had someone just like me. I had a little mini me who is sassy and spunky and you know, I, I try to teach my kids these life lessons that I'm, I'm learning now as I'm an older person that I didn't exactly know or was taught when I was younger. And so one of those things is I tell my husband and I both, we apologize to our children when we screw up and we talk to our kids about cleaning up their messes, not just cleaning up the messes that they make in the house, like an actual mess, but a, a mess in the form of if you hurt someone's feelings or you make a mistake and you can go and make amends, say you're sorry, or somehow make your wrongs right any way you can. And one of those things I teach them, plain and simple, is that everyone makes mistakes. And I don't want my kids to sort of put us on pedestals and think that we don't make mistakes and that we don't that we aren't just like real human beings. I think it's it can be kind of devastating for children to have something happen and suddenly realize that their parents are not superhuman. And so we wanted to instill that in them at a pretty young age. So anyway, my daughter knows very much, and I've talked to her, and that everyone makes mistakes. And uh, the other day, we're standing in the hallway, and she – I don't even remember what it was that I was wanting her to do. It was either – take a bath or clean up her room or do something that I had asked her a couple of times already to do that she hadn't done. And she talked back to me and she's, she's a sass pants. She talks back. She, she's been rolling her eyes since she was probably three and a half. I mean, she had that down and I know she got it for me. I'm not going to pretend that she, she that we don't have cable. So it's not like they watch shows where they're learning that. Like, <laughs> I ain't going to lie. She learned that from her mama. So she asked me and I looked at her and I said, you don't talk to, to mommy like that. And she looks at me square in the face and she goes, well, mommy, everybody makes mistakes. And she turns around and walks back in her room. <laughs> so she's using it against me. And it was one of those moments where I was so stunned that she, I had no response. I'm, I'm rarely speechless. And it was like my mouth opened and I was like, ah. <laughs> like and she and, I, and it was so one of those moments where I needed a good comeback. Like, no, this is not one of those moments where you're allowed to use that. But I was so stunned at how smart she is and smart mouthed she is. And it was that moment. There's like a funny meme about it. Like that moment where you're mad at your children for being exactly like you. And I'm just like, oh my God. Good Lord, help me. So yeah, she's only five. And I am in for it. Can't wait for 13. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to what you're probably wondering, like, okay, what the hell do perfectionism and a shit sandwich have in common? That's the title of what I'm going to talk to you about. Well, as most of you know, who followed me for any length of time, perfectionism is one of the things that I, I help, you know, most, if not all of the women that come to me for private coaching or my classes, it's it is an epidemic, I think, in our culture today. And also, 
I teach it because I have a lot to learn in it. It's one of those things that, you know, a lot of my behaviors have uh, fallen by the wayside as I've gone through this journey, my own personal development journey, and perfectionism and control have hung on for dear life. They're trying not to go anywhere. So it's just one of those things that I still take one day at a time. I don't pretend to have it all nailed down perfectly, but I I definitely have come a long ass way from where I was before, and it, it really is one day at a time. So I talk about it a lot. That's what we're talking about today. And in the last five years of Your Kick-Ass Life, I've received many emails from women asking me various questions. It's kind of the proverbial, like, what is wrong with me? This is what I'm doing, and this is how I'm feeling, and I feel like something's wrong with me. And the short answer of it is nothing is wrong with you. Okay. But these women that email me and ask me these questions, they just want to stop feeling like they're feeling and start to feel better, start to feel happier, and just really more comfortable all around, because we all want that. And I'm going to read to you an email that I got from one of my readers, and I'm going to break this down and talk about it in this particular podcast. So this reader says, I just feel mostly like I am uncomfortable in my skin. It's not so much a weight thing, but that I'll never live up to my expectations. The fear is that if I allow myself to do what I think is, quote unquote, fall short, in my mind, it's a slippery slope to mediocrity, a road that does not interest me. But because of this, everything I do has to be at the maximum, maximum workload, maximum relaxation, etc. There is no in between. I'm not able to find inner peace in balance because I either feel like a slacker or my expectations are simply too high. In parentheses, she says, yes, I struggle with perfectionism. With all of this, I'm not even sure where to begin. So there's a couple of things I see here in this email. And the first, which is so incredibly common, is what I think in clinical terms they call dichotomous thinking. This is also known as black or white thinking. I remember my therapist was the first person to to call out dichotomous thinking in, in my own life. So what it looks like is exactly what she was saying in that email. Either you live up to these expectations that you've created, P.S., that your inner critic has created, <laughs> or on the other side of it, or you're just mediocre. Either you're amazing at everything you do, or you are a total failure. There's no in-between. And I think kind of like as a side note, I think the reason that this happens is because we really like to label things kind of like good or bad. We like to kind of make them so because the middle gray area is hard to be in. It's, it's, it's uncertain and we don't, it's uncomfortable and it's the, I'm doing the best I can. I still mess it up and I can't do everything perfectly. And I'm okay with that space. Like that's really what the middle ground looks like. And it might say okay when I say it, but to actually be in that place is hard. It's hard for many women. So instead of practicing being there, they try as hard as they possibly can to go into the ends of the earth to be everything and to look perfect and to do all the things. And when they can't, which none of us can, but when they can't, they claim failure. They claim mediocrity. They claim complete loserville. So here's here's the lesson in all of this. There's a couple. What you need to get comfortable knowing is that there's excellence, which is all fine and dandy and actually good for us. I'm a big fan of excellence. And there is perfectionism, which feels like being served a shit sandwich at your favorite restaurant. They are two very different things. And so for you listening, where does the line from excellence over into perfectionism get blurry for you? So here's an example. Say you're at work and you can do all the projects given to you and do your absolute best all the while knowing you're human and you might make mistakes. And when you do make mistakes, Instead of completely berating yourself and thinking that you're a failure and then trying even harder next time, you don't do that. You made a mistake, you know you're human, and you practice self-compassion. That's excellence. And that's doing a shit ton of work on yourself to get there. Because trust me, girl, I know that's hard. Perfectionism would be doing all of your work projects plus volunteering for extra work that you really don't have time to do plus doing other people's jobs 
because you feel like, you know, it's like one of those, if it can't be done perfectly, then I might as well just do it myself. And then beating yourself up when you make mistakes, when you fall short, which you inevitably will. So it's helpful for you to spend some time thinking about that and getting really honest with yourself. Only you know when you fall over into that territory. And P.S., can we all agree that nobody likes a shit sandwich ever? So, you know, given that example that I just gave you, it might be helpful for you to look at different areas of your life. Look at your marriage or your relationship. Look at parenting. Look at your job. Look at your friendships. And even like for those of you that are super into personal development, which I know a lot of you are, look at that too. I think it's an area that none of us really look at because if you're listening to this podcast and you, you know, maybe you listen to all my episodes or you listen to other people's podcasts and you read personal development books, are you making up that your personal development journey has to look a certain way? And are you beating yourself up when you have setbacks, et cetera? So are you, in other words, are you putting perfectionism on yourself in your own personal development journey? And if you are, good grief, you're not alone. I see it all the time. And so anyway, just look at all these different kind of puzzle pieces in your life and see where the line is between excellence, doing your best, and perfectionism. Where does it cross over into that other space? What might also be helpful is to think about perfectionism and know if you're in it by asking yourself this very important question. And actually, this is part of the Daring Way program, um, which I learned from the research of, of Brene Brown. So striving for excellence. Well, get, y'all get your pens out because this is like, this is a big one. This is like when I heard this, I was like, oh my God. Okay. Striving for excellence is inwardly focused. In other words, you're doing it to make you feel good. And to honor your values. Perfectionism is outwardly focused. And looks like you thinking, what will they think? Perfectionism is all about creating a persona of yourself that meets the standards of what you've made up other people want of you. Or not just other people, but what organizations want of you. And by organizations, I mean like perhaps it's your religion or your community that you grew up in or your family or what your culture wants of you. So I'm going to repeat that last part. Perfectionism is all about creating a persona of yourself that meets the standards of what you've made up other people want of you. Not particularly yourself, but other people. So excellence is, striving for excellence is inwardly focused. Perfectionism is outwardly focused. In other words, and these are words that are way less profesh, but when I was typing up these notes, this is what came out. Perfectionism is the asshole that makes us feel like we need the approval of everyone and everything else besides us. Put that on a bumper sticker. I also sense that the woman that wrote this email that she asked this question, um, I sense that she is uncomfortable in her own skin because she isn't living authentically. What I mean specifically by that is that when your thinking is that way, you know, when you are creating too high expectations of yourself and you inevitably fall short and then feel like shit about it, what's happening is that you're letting your inner critic call the shots and run the show. Your inner critic is creating these standards of excellence for you and which you will never be able to attain. So you will always fall short and you will always feel uncomfortable and like shit. And the thing is, is that when that happens, it's like, oh, when we fall short and we're like, ah, this sucks and I feel crappy about it or I feel ashamed about it or humiliated or embarrassed or whatever, instead of trying to heal from that and finding resolution in that and, and finding how to behave a different way, what we do is we try harder the next time. Oh, I'm just going to, I'll just do it better next time. Oh, I will prove to them that I can do it. Oh my God. Raise your hand if you've done that. My hand is raised over here because I've done that a million times. Like, oh, I will show you. And the cycle starts all over again. It just gets worse and worse and worse. So here's a quick exercise. Oh, and by the way, I am doing a free call on the inner critic. Y'all know that I talk about this all the time. I'm doing a free one hour training call, my three most effective ways to manage your inner critic. It is on 
August the 20th. It's on a Thursday, August the 20th. If you go to yourkickasslife.com forward slash free call, all one word, free call, all one word. You can sign up for free. It'll be amazing. Come there live. And yes, of course, there's a recording. So I have a exercise for you. This is a different one. This will not be on the free call, but this is just one that I like to do. This is like quick and dirty exercise. So we get out a piece of paper and you draw a line through the middle. And this is a to-do list because I know y'all listen and love to-do lists, right? All right. So I want you to make a to-do list or a goal list that your gremlin is in charge of. This is her list. This is the gremlin list of all the things that you need to be doing, maybe just like for the rest of the year. What do you need to be achieving? What do you need to be organizing? What do you need to be getting together and fixing and solving and all of those things? In a perfect world, what would it look like? And then look at that list and check in with how you feel. And then on the other side of the paper, maybe like on the right side of the paper, make a list that is attainable. Maybe this list is from your wise, most highest self. If you can tap into her, if you've ever done any exercises on that. Maybe it's the, it's the wise you 20 years from now. So this is the list that actually makes you feel good. One that shows excellence, excellence, but not perfectionism. And compare them and see how different they look and see how different they make you feel. The truth is, if you don't know your values and have a realistic view of what they look like in everyday life, because the, the word values gets thrown around a lot in personal development. Um, if you have a copy of my book, 52 Ways to Live a Kick-Ass Life, I believe it's chapter four, where I talk exactly about values and how to figure out what yours are. But, you know, a lot of people say, I'll give an example of the value of spirituality. So it's easy to say you have a value around spirituality, but are you very clear about what that means to you on a practical daily basis? Because if you don't, then you don't actually have a North Star leading you. So if you don't know what your values are at all, you don't have a North Star leading you. And if you know what your values are, but you can just name them, and you don't actually know what that looks like on an everyday level, like what are the behaviors around that? What are the thoughts around that? It, you're kind of lost. So in other words, you won't really know what's important about who you are and how you live your life. Okay, and if you just like shit a brick, and if you're totally freaked out, A, that was not my intention, but B, I'm not going to just leave you hanging like, bye, podcast episode over. No, that would be a jerk move. All right, B. <laughs> Here's a clue. If you're in the least bit interested in personal development, then I can bet your bottom dollar that courage is one of your values. So you have one. Because without courage, you can't honor any other value or live authentically. You can't. And it's a real bitch to try to live your life from a place of courage if your inner critic is sitting in the driver's seat of your life while perfectionism is in the passenger seat, which I have a feeling a lot of you listening, that's what's going on. Those two are driving along in charge of the radio, singing Taylor Swift songs while you're in the back seat going, what the fuck is going on? What that looks like in real life, instead of a weird Taylor Swift metaphor, is that you feel like crap a lot. You try harder and harder to be better. You try harder and harder to get more done. You try harder to look amazing and to avoid criticism and judgment because that's really what we're all trying to do, right? And you guys, the reason I know all of this is because I used to live there. I, I, and that was my zip code. And sometimes things get crazy and I fall backwards into that rabbit hole and have to climb back out. This happens to most women, if not all of us. So the good news is you're in really great company. And so again, I would love to invite you to my free call, yourkickasslife.com forward slash free call. And I highly encourage you to do the exercise that I told you about in this particular podcast. I would love for you to share this podcast episode. If you would rather share it in blog post format, it's all on the same page, yourkickasslife.com forward slash five nine. And I hope to see you on the free call. Tell all your friends about it. I give away my three most effective ways to manage your inner critic. These are big, big exercises. Two of them are actually from the Daring Way program that I take my private one-on-one -on -one clients through. And it is absolutely my favorite exercise in figuring out 
your inner critic, and actually practicing shame resilience. So it is a big doozy, girls. Yourkickasslife.com forward slash free call, all one word. I hope to see you there. And until next time, I will see you out in cyberspace. Bye-bye. 